Hello everyone, welcome to this video all about geometric operations which is a category of measurement and data questions. In particular we're going to be focusing on a topic called diameter. So let's begin by reading a short description of what we can expect in diameter related questions. So diameter refers to the straight line bisecting any circle or the symmetrical line. It is a straight line through the circle which passes through the origin. Diameter questions are associated with circumference questions. So you should understand clearly the properties of a circle as well as be able to work out the surface area and volume of any circular objects such as spheres, cylinders and cones. It is also important to remember that the radius is part of the diameter, i.e. the radius is half of the diameter. Pay attention to how the question denotes pi as this may also vary throughout different questions. Alright, so diameter is pr pretty much one of the most important parts of a circle whenever you're discussing questions to do with a circle. So let's begin by discussing what actually is diameter. And we saw that the definition was that it's actually a very special specific line that goes through a circle. So in circles, or generally in most things, the origin, this word, is what we describe the very very center so this is the origin so what that means is that since it's at the exact center of the circle if you draw a line from any part of the circle to the origin then you're going to have a line that is exactly the same in length every time that that's just because the property of a circle is that that well, it's exactly the same point, which is how you draw a circle, right? So what that means is that if you draw these lines and they happen to be, well, going through the same direction, we can see that, well, these lines, which we call the radius, if you have two of them going through the same direction like this, going through the origin, then you've got what's called the diameter or what's essentially the length or the width of a circle, I suppose. So that's why if you have two radiuses, they equal the diameter. Now, the diameter is also very, very closely associated with circumference, and that's because Circumference is a measure of diameter. So basically what happened is that a long, long time ago, some mathematicians came to the interesting conclusion. So basically what they did was draw a bunch of different size circles. And they discovered that the circle or the circumference of the circle, which is just the fancy word for the perimeter of a circle, no matter how big or small your circle was, it would always be if you divide the circumference by the diameter of each of these circles, it would always give you the same number. So if you divide the circumference, if I can spell it correctly, circumference by the diameter, you always get the same number. And I believe it was the Greek mathematician Archimedes who discovered that the number had to be something very, very close to 3.14. And hopefully you notice that is the number pi. So you can see how that is why circumference and diameter questions are always going to be so closely linked because, well, that's just how the math works. For all circles, if you take the circumference divided by diameter, you always get pi. So that means as long as we understand this relationship, which we can denote as a formula where c divided by d is equal to pi, we can do some rearranging just to make the, question, the formula look a little nicer and you'll recognize it as the formula you often work with in circle questions. Now, of course, because of the fact that the radius, if you have two of them, they equal to the diameter, you can substitute that in here to get c is equal to two pi r instead as well. So you can use these two equations interchangeably 
um, and just use whatever you remember better. Personally, I think this one's a bit confusing because the area of a circle is pi r squared, and these kind of look similar. So I just pr prefer to remember c equals to pi d, or just remember the story about how Archimedes drew a bunch of circles and figured out that it always equals pi if you divide these two numbers. Either way, use whichever thing works. Um, and that is kind of the story of circles. So the other thing that we do want to talk about is the fact that pi is a irrational number. What that means is that the decimal point 3.14, it actually goes on towards infinity. And we actually, these days, we we figure out how powerful computers are by forcing them to calculate the infinite digits of pi. And I believe these modern computers can actually calculate trillions of trillions of digits. And that's just tells you how um, interesting the, the digit pi is. Now, obviously, if we want to work with the number pi in real life, we can't write down all the numbers of pi uh, because that's, well, physically impossible. And also, the smaller your decimal points get, the less, the less importance they have on your calculation. So what we usually do is we usually round the number up to 3.14 and just to two decimal points which is fairly common, but decimal points are a bit difficult or finicky to work with if you don't have a calculator. So other times they'll also say that pi is equal to 22 over seven. And that's just because if you do the division 22 over seven, you get 3.142 something, 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 et cetera, et cetera. So you can see that's very close to the real value of pi as well. So always make sure what type of pi they want you to round your number to because uh, depending on the decimal point, some people even say round pi to three. And you can see how the lack of decimal points can quickly change the accuracy of your answer. So pay attention to that in the question. They will usually say which number they want you to work with. Other than that, um, all the other things to do with diameter is fairly straightforward. We just use these equations to figure out things like the circumference or the area and also utilize them to figure out volume for three-dimensional objects as well. Usually the three-dimensional objects such as cones or spheres aren't as common as they are a bit more challenging to work with. But as long as you understand the formulas, they shouldn't be too difficult. Cylinders are a type of prism, so the way you figure out volume is exactly the same as any other prism. You figure out the base shape, which is in this case a circle, and once you figure out the area of that base shape, you can then multiply it by the height to figure out the volume of the cylinder. Okay, so that is about the introduction of all the things to do with diameter. Let's see if we can put that knowledge to practice in this example question. Here in this example question, we're told that the circumference of a circle is 44 centimeters. What is the diameter if the circumference is given as 2 pi r? Now, see how the question has specifically told us that they want us to use this format of pi. So if you use pi is equal to 3.14, you would actually get the wrong answer. You would not get any of these answer options. So always make sure you pay attention to what the question says and just don't memorize the value of pi. Okay, so we talked about how the formula for the circumference of a circle is pi d or 2 pi r. And we can see that the question also gave us the equation that circumference is given as 2 pi r. So let's use that information to our purpose. We are told that the circumference is 44 centimeters. So we can use either equation, but since the question does want to figure out diameter, we can skip a step by using this equation rather than this one, since we would have to convert the radius to diameter if we use this formula. So just pick and choose whichever formula helps you out in the question. So 
we know that c is equal to 44 and we also know that c is equal to pi over d so remember that we are looking for the what the diameter is so let's rearrange what we've got to make d or the diameter the subject of this number sentence so if we want to make d the subject all that means is that we want the d to be the only thing to the side of the equal sign so to do that we would divide everything by pi and that gives us 44 centimeters divided by pi is equal to d so now all we need to do is use the substitution that they've given us pi is equal to 22 over 7. so let's do 44 divided by 22 over 7. now it's very handy that they've given us pi in the form of a fraction because division with fractions is actually very simple all you need to do is multiply the exact same number but make sure you flip it flip the fraction around so what that means is that the 7 is now on the top and the 22 is on the bottom and change the division sign to a multiplication sign these two th number sentences are exactly the same that's just how fractions work and so that allows us to figure out the answer 22 goes into 44 twice so we have 2 times 7 which is equal to 14 centimeters so we figured out that the correct answer is option c okay so in this video we saw how important it was to understand the relationship with circumference and diameter and we also saw how it, it was important to utilize the correct value of pi so with that is all the techniques that we would utilize in diameter related questions hopefully this video ends up helping you guys out in the future thanks everyone so much for listening